But you know what? I'm happy because I know the next speaker is going to agree with me. It is all about the money. She's a chartered accountant. Nungkunle uh, Koboto, she's the executive chairman of Vasis Wenzaluba Koboto. You know the firm. It's the largest uh, audit and accounting firm in South Africa. Also, of course, she has the record that will never be taken away from her, the first female black accountant uh, in South Africa. Uh, she started uh, her career at uh, the University of Transkei. That's where I got my, uh, my studies as well. Uh, and I'm sure you would have been uh, serving under Professor Nkutlu, oh. Wiseman Nkutlu, who is uh, the first black uh, chartered accountant. Uh, he was um, her, her boss. Well, uh, she, of course, uh, when she left uh, the university to begin her articles, KPMG in the Mtata office, joined the Transkei Development Corporation, whose building is... Uh, Back in the 80s, it was probably one of the most recognizable buildings in Mpata, uh, TDC building, uh, senior manager in finance, left TDC in 1992 to start uh, accounting uh, and the practice now. She had a vision to start a medium-sized black accounting firm as opportunities opened up after 1994. Founded Kobordo, of course, uh, in uh, 1996 and uh, left Kobordo, got involved in uh, BE companies. And uh, she has served on boards of listed companies such as... Uh, Nail was mentioned uh, just now. I'm sure you had something to say <laughs> about what Deepi Lane was saying about Nail. Uh, Imperial, FinTech, uh, Banks Appeal Board. I tell you what, it's a long CV. And uh, of course, she was part of a, South uh, a few South Africans who went on a five-week program uh, run by Merrill Lynch and Georgetown University uh, in New York. She is going to talk today about how to succeed in finance. It's all about the money. <laughs> So that we, as we start, we, we know the pain, you know, 
oh, okay, this is what they spoke about. You go through pain, don't die there. So, so then we persevered all of that. I'm one of those who are fortunate to have grown up in, 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 with, with a family that were, that were in business. My parents were, in, they were my mother was a, a nurse, my father a teacher who went into business. And so as a young person, I was helping in my father's business, in my mother's business, and all of that. And then, fortunately, also I grew up in Transkai. So the, 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 their businesses evolved into more formal businesses. My father had taken a, a panel beating shop. So I was there, you know, working as a bookkeeper. When I got exposed to chartered accountants and had auditors, you know, Professor Bosu came to develop our auditors. Um, that's when I realized that, you know, I don't want to be the doctor that my father said I should be. Mm -hmm. I want to be a chartered accountant. My uncles were in business. In Transkai, there were a lot of black people who were in business who owned hotels, garages, and things like that. I grew up in an environment where being an entrepreneur was natural. So it was natural for me to break, to break, to sorry, to dream that one day I'd have my own business. And um, so, fortunately, I found what I wanted to do. I, I started uh, articles at KPMG. That's when this. This, this whole idea of having my own practice was bad. As I was walking up and down those passages, I thought one day I'm going to have my own practice. So when my colleagues were complaining about we were being used and all of that, you know, we went according to how much we paid, I said, no, no, one day I must have my own practice. I must learn as much as possible. At that time, you can imagine doing articles as a black person who didn't get opportunities. I created my own because I had this dream that one day I'm going to have my own practice. Uh, and uh, fortunate enough that they offered me a partnership eight months after articles. You know that that is a rare opportunity. Not even in today's terms, uh, uh, no matter what color you are, that would offer an opportunity to be a partner. I talked with this idea for a while, but I then realized, no, no, I have a dream of having my own practice. And I needed to prove this to myself that as a black person, I could succeed in doing this. I was not going to take it easily out. So I went back to my bosses and said, no, thank you very much for the offer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I had to leave because really, I mean, there was no point in me continuing there. I went into TTC, you know, Destiny will always open doors for you. Again, I mean, the move to TTC was actually excellent. I was in a development that environment where we're assisting people go into business in terms of finance, support, and all of that. So I was in that environment. So you can imagine, I mean, this dream now is really growing. I'm being empowered and equipped. So I got exposure to other aspects of business, right? And even then, I created my own opportunities. I would run projects that were not meant for me because I had to learn as much as possible. And again, as I said here, destiny will always come. You know, something will push you towards your destiny. Mm -hmm. So something happened that I realized, no, no, it's time now for me to pursue my dream of starting my own practice. So you can imagine, I mean, you're a young person. You're saying you're going into a practice. People say, are you crazy? How are you going to compete with the big eight, mm -hmm. the KPMGs of this world? And I realized that, you know, they were expressing their own fears. I had no such fear. So I would say, no, no, <laughs> this is one thing I'm going to do. When you, you could, they couldn't persuade you, then they would say, oh, I know, but this is lecture part time, you know? And I said, no, I'm not going to lecture part time. I'm going into business to succeed. If I have a push in of a part time lecturing position, there's no way I'm going to fight to, to succeed. So I, I started as myself and my uh, PA. I got a 100,000 loan from TTC, which I paid in three years. Yes. Um, so I started there. And when I started, I decided to, to do consulting. I didn't really like auditing. So I thought, ah, I'm not going to call myself in auditing. I'm going to do consulting. And you must understand, when I went into business, I had a network. People knew me. I had worked at TTC. A, a lot of my clients at that time were entrepreneurs who wanted to go into business. 
So I was helping them establish their businesses, applications. So everything that I'd learned, I could use, you know, as I started my business. I was part of a bus, I contacted in Johannesburg. I got into, into programs, there was a Canadian organization that was financing black manufacturers. So I had a lot of black manufacturers who were my clients and my fees were paid by the Canadians because cash flow is king when I'm starting a business. But after a while I realized that this whole thing of a uh, consulting business was risky because you may have a project today and not have it to, tomorrow. So I thought, as much as I hate, I hate auditing, I need to include auditing as part of the, my service offering because it's stable. You have a this client for five years and you know that you're making fees of 100,000 from them or whatever it is, this flexibility, flexibility that I'm talking about. Because you've got to be able to uh, see what, how you're going to succeed or fail and factor that in. Because cash flow is important. Uh, this is what I always say. That you, when you're starting a business, you don't want to do many things. The one thing that you want to do is the one that's going to, to generate as much cash flow as possible. And from there, then you can expand and do the things that you love or the bigger dreams that you have. What is going to generate cash flow is number one. Because if you can't generate cash flow, you can't sustain your business, and therefore you can't remain in business. So I was able to, to have that flexibility. And I tell you, I mean, including auditing was the best thing, because that's how my business really then grew. And it took 18 months for that business to be stable. You went through that pain of not knowing when your, where your salary is going to come from, and all of that. <coughs> but you persevere because you believe in this dream. You believe that you can succeed. I mean, there's not even one day that I ever thought of quitting. So when you see that pain, don't quit. You know, you don't die from the pain. You actually learn from the pain. And I, I was doing auditing, which I didn't like, but I will do whatever my business needs to be done because I intend to succeed. Um, Again, I mean, 18 months, we're doing well, whatever, whatever. So the business grew from those two people to two partners and 30 clubs, you know. Wow, wonderful. And then as opportunities opened up in South Africa, I thought, now this is time to expand. People, they, were, they had their cushy jobs, you know, their chartered accountants, they're earning a lot of money, or saying I must leave this and risk it to establish a business I'm not sure is even going to succeed. But eventually I, I persuaded them. But the, the important thing is that, you know, two is better than one. As black people, we need to understand this thing that we cannot succeed on our own. You know, because I have gifts that you don't have. And together, we can make a success of this. And just because I'm the entrepreneur, I have the courage to go into business and all of that, I need that those partners, others were very good auditors, which I didn't want to do. And uh, others are good at managing the operation and all of that, we need all of us. You know, you can't say, ah, because I'm the deal, deal rainmaker here, I'm the one who brings business, so I'm important and all of that. Let's stop this thing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I appreciate the fact that it is when we work together <coughs> that we will succeed. And so, <coughs> sorry, overnight the business grew from that two partners and 30 staff to 10 partners and 200 staff with offices all over South Africa. I mean, imagine, the more you do take that step and you succeed, the more you, you feel confident that you're going to succeed, right? That's how Cobalt Incorporated was born. And then we're able to do <coughs> all the other things that we're not able to do. We're able to add other services like forensics, uh, consulting, IT, internal audit, and all of that. Then, um, of course, we need to understand that when you want to go into business, choose something that you know, that you've been trained in, that you've been exposed in. Because you tend to succeed more when you do something that you know. And I'm not saying when an opportunity opens up, can I my sister? When an opportunity op opens up, don't go for it. I'm not saying that. Because, I mean, opportunities come once in a lifetime. But make sure that you learn as much as possible. 
because that thing of knowledge, you know, actually helps you to succeed. And so <coughs> I stuck to things that I understand. I branched out and I realized that mm -mm, you must just really stick to what you, you, you are good at because that's where you're really going to succeed. And uh, so Gobato incorporated then matched with Sisters and Zalubak Gobato to, to, uh, to have what we have now, Sisters and Zalubak Gobato, the fifth largest accounting firm in South Africa, with now 50 partners and 1,000 staff members. <laughs> I want to say to you that whole factor of perseverance. <coughs> No matter how much Transnet wanted to empower black people, no matter how much Mr. <coughs> Kikaba wanted to empower black, pe black people, if you didn't have a large black accounting firm that can do the audit of Transnet, you couldn't do it. So we need people who are going to start the small businesses, persevere and grow them as we've had here today, to make them size too large. You know, you have to we have to start somewhere. And we have to persevere in the journey. And we have to, to <coughs> I diversify and make the right decisions that will help us to sustain our business uh, in the future. That, that is so critical. And now our dream is to be indeed the big player in South Africa, uh, to be a big player in the continent. We're already doing a lot of work in Africa and to be a seriously global firm in the next five years. That's what drives us. So your vision must grow. You know, it must expand within yourself and you must identify those opportunities that will take you there. So I keep saying we are part of this uh, association of accounting firm, firms called Morrison International. And I've been saying, we've been part of the association for a while. Let us see whether it's going to be the vehicle that is going to take us truly to be global because we've got similar size and thinking firms there, and some in China, uh, in India, and all of that, whether we cannot position ourselves with the pits to these countries and really become a contender for the big four. We think, I'm thinking about that now. I live it. When I talk about it, do things happening tomorrow? But it's the thing that you know keeps me alive because <coughs> you, when you arrive here, you've got to think of how do I get there? When you arrive here, you have to think about uh, where do I get there? It really saddens uh, my heart, the fact that we have foreigners who come into, so if they're foreigners here, there's nothing against foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> we have foreigners who come into our country, whether they're from Africa or Asia or, or, or Europe, who come in to start businesses here, whether small or, or big or whatever, and employ our people. You know, uh, and we can't do these things ourselves. It shouldn't be like that. We should be establishing businesses and employing foreigners. Mm -hmm. You know, so we need to reverse this thing because it's not healthy, it's not good. And I want to say also, this whole issue of black people can only establish small businesses and uh, medium-sized businesses. Yes, we have to, to, to start there. We have to support small and medium-sized businesses. That's where we started. Right, so I have nothing against small and medium sized businesses. But we have to also understand that being an entrepreneur doesn't only mean that you start a small business. We are fortunate in South Africa that we've got many people who've been exposed in various sectors. You know, you've worked for a bank for 20 years, or you've worked for a manufacturing company, pharmaceutical manufacturing company for 20 years. Those people have gained experience, they have a network, they, they, even internationally and all of that. Those people are in a position to start really serious big businesses. And we've seen these businesses start in South Africa, like the MNES of this world, Outsurance. When did they start discovery? When did they start now? When were they already born? You know, so. Mm. And they've become big players in our country. And there's black people who have the experience now, who've had the exposure. There is no reason why we're not thinking like that. And I'm, I'm really excited that at least our own leaders now are pushing us, you know, because we really need to encourage those people. They were saying whether entrepreneurs are born 
or made. I believe that there are people like myself who may be natural at this thing where you have the courage to go into business anyway and don't have that kind of fear. But we have uh, also those people who, have, who can have the confidence to go into business because they know the stuff. They've been doing this for 20 years or 30 years. We need to encourage those pe people to step out. I know, as they were saying, the, the risk factor, they're quite comfortable. You know, they, they, they have arrived, they have these responsibilities. But the more we talk about these things, the more we will treat their consciences to go out. Because we need to establish these big businesses. And, um, you know, when we, we were, I had this vision of a, a big accounting firm, and I was, again, convincing people, you know, we can do this. Hey, we've been with Miss Demsize for a while, we're comfortable, we know this, you're asking us to move again, you know? It was not because I wasn't fearful, it was not because I wasn't thinking, hey, we already have this, why do we risk it? And I'll, I'll, and I'll share with you, so you go and, and then sell this, anyway, eventually I sway them and they agreed. But then, even if you have agreed, they have agreed, in their minds they're still medium-sized, you know, they will still want to do things medium-sized. So are we going to have the courage now to go for the transnet of this world on our own? And the tenor is out. I remember I was overseas at the time I'm getting this phone call. Not like, uh, uh, what are we going to do? Are we going to tend on our own or join them with the big boy as usual? I'm like, no, no, we're going to tend on our own. Uh, and people are fearful. You can feel the fear all around you. You know, you go into your hotel room and you just, you are fearful yourself. You just, <laughs> you just pray and say, you know, we have to do this. If you say you are big and we, we behave the same way we behaved all along, then, I mean, how are we going to move forward, you know? And you must understand that why I'm fearful is because I've been talking to people, board members of this organization and all of that, and they look me in the eye, my sister, and they say, we, you know, we raise bonds overseas. <laughs> at the time. We raise bonds, I'm finishing up. We raise bonds overseas. And um, how are you going to raise bonds with a season all about about your signature? Please be realistic. I think, don't think we're ready, man. Five years. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm very sorry. This is the time. I'm not waiting. We're not waiting five years. We've moved forward. I'm moving forward. We are not waiting five years. So when this calls come, are we going to tend on our own? I remember the conversations with the board members and CFOs. I have that ringing in my head. What if indeed this market is not ready for us? You know, so we have to take the risk. Risk everything that we have that we've built, you know, and lose it all because of a market that is not ready. Sometimes you have to push the market to be ready, you know. And wow, what are they were ready. They took the, they were so excited when they, they took the decision. But they're still fearful. Will they do it? Even the minister, you, you could see he was checking on how are they doing a transnet or doing excellently. They, they, they went on a, on a bond issue. It was eight times over subscribe. Subscribe. Eight times with a season all about about your signature. So don't listen to people who are trying to discourage you. You know, if you believe in yourself and you believe it is the right time, and timing when you start a business is everything. And we moved to start this big firm at the right time when the thinking within the country was changing. Thank you. Oh, thank you.